if you're a regular viewer of mine, you're probably clicking on this video and you're like, what in the hell are we doing here, Saint? And I'm going to tell you right now, I saw an opportunity and I took it to do two things. One, a lot of people are probably looking for a guide. How do I get to Moog? How do I get through Moog? I want to get to Shadow of the Earth Tree content. I've got a clear, concise video for how to do that right here. Uh, how to fight Moog, how to be good at Moog without relying on any sort of like, oh, you got to change your build, nothing like that. Um, as well as a quick guide on how to get to Moog. There are two ways to do this. One is extremely easy. If you already have the consecrated snowfield unlocked, you can just explore around on the west side of the consecrated snowfield and you will find a teleporter that will take you directly to the Mogwin Dynasty. But let's assume that you don't have that, and you need help finding Moog. As soon as you start the game, this guy, White Mask Vare, is hanging out right outside the Stranded Graveyard. You can't miss him. After you defeat your first Elden Lord, and it doesn't matter who it was, uh, or not Elden Lord, I'm sorry, but after you defeat your first uh, Shardbearer, it doesn't matter who it is, uh, you can have an audience with the two fingers. So, most people, I think, would probably do Godric first. Easy peasy, not a problem. Let's go get Godric. He's taken care of. Now we're going to head to the Round Table Hold. We're going to talk to the two fingers. We're going to get the gesture. If you already have this gesture in your inventory, and you're doing a little checklist to see, like, oh, what have I messed up? Uh, because Vare is not where he's supposed to be. It means you, if you already have that uh, rapture gesture, it means that you've already done this part. So Vare has probably already moved. He is, uh, he's going to move to Lyurnia. But before we head to Lyurnia, we are going to head to the Murkwater Cave to get invaded. Uh, and then Yura is going to help us. And then right in that area, we're going to talk to Yura. We're going to get his quest started. This is going to come in handy later. We're going to head to the Rose Church in Lyurnia. This is where it's located at. You can see, uh, you know, where to go. This is where Vari is hanging out at. If you talk to him, he's going to give you three bloody fingers to invade with. Doesn't matter the outcome of these invasions. Uh, just do three invasions. He gives you five fingers. You need three invasions. Uh, we're going to talk to Yura again in Lyurnia. This is at the Academy Gate. Um, it's you, You're going to have to get the key to access this. Um, now, if you're past this point, if you have already been to the Mountaintops of the Giants, you don't have to do this Eura stuff. But if you haven't been to the Mountaintops of the Giants, you need to do the Eura stuff. Just go ahead and get it out of the way. Once we've done three invasions uh, for Vare, or we can head to the Writhe Blood Ruins and find a, a red summon sign there and we can invade a, uh, some guy. Uh, you can do that instead if you don't want to do three invasions, but I'm an invader, so do the three invasions. Um, once we've done that, uh, White Mask Vare is going to give us a white cloth and he wants us to soak it in the blood of a maiden. This is where I always take it. There are other options, but I go to the Church of Inhibition. Uh, I go this way because it allows me to grab some upgrades for my flask, which I'm going to want anyway. We talk to this dead body. That gives us the Lord of Blood's favor. Um, the other place you can go is over here. Uh, the Sister's Belfry or is, is what it's... This one right here. Um, there's three portals that you can take. You need like a Mystic Magic key. There's one there. And then go to that portal. It will take you to the very start of the game and the finger ma maiden at the door at the very start of the game you can also use her blood for this um we head back to vare vare is going to give us the bloody finger so that now we can invade uh, as many times as we want keep talking to him this dialogue will end but we're not done yet we let this dialogue finish we talk to him again now he gives us this knight's talisman pure blood knight's metal and this is an item that will go into our inventory that we can use uh, that will transport us directly to Mogwin Dynasty. Um, the, it will put you right at the front door, basically. You'll be standing looking directly at the map fragment for the, the Dynasty. If you take the Consecrated Snowfield, you're on the other side of the Mogwin Dynasty area, and you're going to have to walk through all of it. It's very short. It's no big deal. Very easy to find. Uh, but if you take this, there's no missing it. Um, 
The next thing we're going to want to do is finish off Yura's quest. If we haven't done all of it, like I've been showing you how to do it, when to do it, um, then he won't necessarily be here until we do some stuff for him. So that's why I was saying, let's just go ahead, let's just get it out of the way. Uh, now, if, you, if your character has already been to the mountaintops of the giants, you won't need to do this step, I don't think. You should be able to just come here, and you should be able to fight Eleonora. Uh, at this second church of America. It's directly north of the Atlas Highway. Um, you can just, from the Atlas Highway Junction, you can just go north. You're gonna drop off a little cliff. Uh, you're gonna fight Eleanor, Eleonora. And once you defeat Eleonora, she is going to give us um, uh, a wondrous physic tier. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to basically skip the big damage that we would have to take otherwise during Moog's phase transition. The purifying uh, bloody physic tier, whatever it's called. You'll see it here. Um, we're going to put that in our flask. If our build is done, if our build is ready to go and strong, then we don't need this. The purifying crystal tier. Uh, you can finish Moog off before he gets into phase two if you've got like a good strong build. But let's assume that you don't have a good strong build. I'm gonna show you how to beat Moog um, very easy, very reliably. Uh, it's This is like getting good, but you're going to see that getting good is not hard. Now, remember when I said I saw an opportunity at the beginning of this video, and you, you know, oh, what are you doing, Saint? Why are you making uh, this like PVE walkthrough? It's because I saw an opportunity to return a beloved character to help you get good at Moog. Welcome, not to the dynasty, but to the scrub dojo. To the birthplace of our dynasty. Aw, oh, hell, son, look who comes crawling back for more on your hands and on your knees with your eyes wide and your tongue sticking out of your mouth on your hands and knees looking up at me wagging your little tail drooling saying please scrub daddy John Sekiro show me how it's done and that's what I'm gonna do what you're seeing right here is pretty much all Moog has to offer he ain't got a lot of moves he's just got a lot of different ways to time together now it's been a minute since I stepped behind a controller I've been retired. I keep forgetting how to attack, and I'm just pressing L1. But what you can do is you can look at me press L1, and you can say to yourself, that'd probably be a good time to attack right there. Look at how I dodge gracefully with the power of movement. Don't even need a damn dodge button. We're going to roll backwards from this thing. We're going to let his combo go. His combo has different ends. This right here, if you got carrying retaliation, you can parry that, snatch it out of the air. You can also carry and retaliate anytime he throws blood at you, assuming that it's not that move right there, the blood flame talent. If he's throwing the blood at you, it means you're too far away from him as it is. The only blood move you should see in this entire fight is blood flame talent and the little pull down blood rain. That's it. This move right here is a hitbox on the end of it. That's why I blocked it but you shouldn't be blocking it. You should be positioning yourself in a way to hit it. Let's assume you don't have carrying retaliation. You can just run through that. I've had enough discussing it. Let's get down to whipping ass. I'm gonna punish everything that he does after he drives that pitchfork into the ground. And when he does the blood flame talon, I'm just gonna run around it, whip his ass, and when he throws the trident, he's gonna miss me because I'm too close, and then I'm gonna whip his ass, and then I'm gonna knock him down on his ass, and I'm gonna whip his ass some more. I'm gonna stomp a mud hole in him, and then I'm gonna walk it dry, because that's how I do things. That's how I get them done. Karen retaliate this. I want you to know that this character right here has not leveled up. I am using a plus three weapon, a plus three long sword. There is no way this should be harder for you than it is for me right now. 
This is mechanical, all right? That's what this is. This is a goddamn blueprint on how to whip ass. And you're looking at it. It's super easy. He's got one physical combo he can mix and match to fit in how he wants it. He's got Blood Flame Talon. He can follow that up with a charge. He can follow it up with the Blood Rain. That's it. That's all he's got. This is all it takes. Now we're just whipping his ass. When you get his health about here, notice how I've got those two rings on me. He's gonna start counting in Latin. When he gets down to anus, that's when it's time bottoms up. We're gonna have a little sip. We're gonna drink a little Steve Weiser, a little Sekiro Saki Weiser. All right, just like this. We got all the damn time in the world, son. No rush, just drink that bubble. Now you're not taking that insane damage. Oh, but he healed. Well, if your build is worth a shit, it won't matter that he healed. You'll have put quite a bit of damage onto him, right? I don't have that much damage to put onto him, which means I have to do this all over again. I'm doing it for you, because you're too damn stupid to do it yourself, which is why your daddy's not proud of you. He, he ran away from home. He took your baseball trophy that you got when you was in the fourth grade playing Little League because he said you didn't deserve it. Most improved player, most improved player, my ass and your daddy's ass, which is why he took that trophy and pawned it when he dropped your dumb ass and he dropped your dumb ass mom and he went out to find himself a real child that would make him proud. Well, here's your chance to make your daddy proud and beat Moog all by yourself. Keep in mind, you can have the god dang mimic tear or whatever the hell you'll want. You can frostbite Moog, what? You can bleed Moog, what? You can poison Moog, what? You can scarlet rot Moog, what? There's no end of status effects that you can apply to this dumb bastard. Do it however you want to do it. Just make sure when he sticks his trident in the ground in phase two, you appreciate that that trident is gonna explode and whip your ass. As you can see, we are not backing away from him. We're staying up close. This is where we wanna be. This is where he's least dangerous. He's throwing blood flame on the floor. It's gonna do a little damage. It's not a big deal. You should have at least 40 vigor when you're doing this, right? However, when he's throwing the blood flame around off the trident with his attacks like that right there and that right there, if it hits you, it's basically a real hit. So don't get hit by it. Ah, how do I not get hit, John Sekiro? How do I not get hit? By staying close to him like I've been saying, you dumb son of a bitch. Now one thing I'll tell you that gets on my nerves about this fight and if I ever try and help people with this fight, something that gets on my nerves, it really pisses me off, is when people try and fight Moog on the stairs. If you have any say in it at all, I urge you, do not fight his ass on stairs or steps. Let me tell you something about stairs and steps. Stairs and steps or where video game mechanics go to die. We don't fight on them. Do everything in your power to get him off the steps and away from the steps so that he don't go after them. I want you to notice that when he does that attack right there, he reaches up into the sky. He does blood boom and he starts flying. We just walk forward. We just walk towards him. If you need to do a little roll, do a little roll and then just walk towards him. That's a good time to heal right there. It's free and you don't have to stop attacking. You don't have to make time to heal. They give you time to heal. Why? Why? Because this is a baby's game for babies and the fact that you're watching this video, liking and subscribing is the same reason you're bringing shame on all your ancestors. Unlike me, John Sekiro, who's just burning off bad karma, left 
and right by teaching you, by passing it on. Oh, Saint, you're teaching us how to kill. I mean, not Saint. I mean, John Sekiro. You're teaching us how to kill. That can't be good for karma. Yeah, but I'm teaching you how to kill a sexual predator. It's fine, actually. Now, pay attention right here. I want you to notice how every attack that he has is the same as the attacks that he had in phase one, as long as we stay up on him. The only difference is, really, when he does Blood Flame Talon and he charges at you, it has a little hitch in its step now. So you gotta delay your roll by just a little bit. Not a big deal. Easy to delay. Listen, when you're going out there and you're trying this for the first time, if he still kills you, if he still kills you, that's fine. As long as it feels like you're actually making some progress here. Because this is how it's done. There's all kinds of other little tips and tricks. Stuff that you can work into this fight to make it smoother, faster, etc. This right here is the most basic, bare bones, how to kill this dumb son of a bitch that there is to know. All of the extra damage that you're going to have, all the extra health that you're going to have, all the extra weapon upgrades, ashes of war. If you've got it and you want to use some of those spirit summons, go ahead, bring them. It's just, you have to remember that if you're summoning those spirit summons, it's going to make it a little harder to predict what he's doing exactly. I know what he's doing because he can only focus on me. He can't focus on my mimic tier and then turn around and then focus on me. He can't focus on my phantom, then turn around and focus on me. I'm the only thing he can look at. I'm using that to my advantage. And that's it. And that's the bottom line. You know, as the lead character in the hit game, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, I spend a lot of time in the afterworld, in between loading screens. And sometimes I'm up there with your ancestors and they're looking down and they see you struggling with Moog and they just start crying. Your grandparents are in heaven and they're looking down on you and they're crying. Not no more. Because now you know how to whip Moog's ass. And that's the bottom line because John Sekiro said so. It's just that easy. It's just that easy, folks. He's got one combo. He can mix and match it, but it always ends the same. It's, you can always tell when it's safe to attack after the combo. Dodge back from Blood Flame Talon. Dodge into the charge. In phase two, the charge has a little hitch. When he does Blood Boon and flies, roll if you need to, then just walk towards him and wait and always be making your way back to face Moog. Try and keep as little distance between him and you as you can, because that's where he's dangerous. But now you're all set, you're all ready to go. Hop into the shadow of the Erd Tree, easy peasy. And you've, uh, I, I think maybe you've also got to beat Radon, but I, y'all you, you you got this. Just, you know, just beat Radon, okay? All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, Later, y'all.